Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about glycogenesis. Let's break the term. Glyco means glycogen here and genesis means formation. So basically, this means glycogen formation. So when we take a meal food of carbohydrate, it's get broken down into glucose and that glucose have to be stored somewhere inside the body as an energy reserve. The glucose is usually stored in, for, in the liver or in the muscles and the process by which glucose get converted into the glycogen and that means a storable form is called glycogenesis so let's see step by step how this glycogenesis process occurs so here we have glucose glucose is our substrate for glycogenesis so glucose would be converted firstly to glucose 6-phosphate Glucose would be converted to glucose 6-phosphate and this is a phosphorylation reaction and this reaction would be catalyzed by hexokinase, hexokinase enzyme which is a very important enzyme in this pathway. Next what would happen, uh, glucose 6-phosphate now it would be converted into glucose 1 phosphate and it's an isomerization reaction and this reaction is catalyzed by phosphoglucomutase this reaction is catalyzed by phosphoglucomutase so now if we talk about the structure of the glucose glucose somewhat looks like this so this is the basic structure of glucose so here is the one two three four five and sixth carbon so in the sixth carbon what would happen in the next step glucose would be phosphorylated in its sixth carbon and it would form glucose 6 phosphate so let's see so here in the sixth carbon of the glucose here we would attach a phosphate group by this hexokinase enzyme and this is called glucose 6 phosphate and now what happens uh, glucose 6 phosphate would be converted into glucose 1 phosphate and this glucose 1 phosphate is actually a isomer of these glucose 6 phosphate I say after getting converted into glucose 1 phosphate it would be converted into UDP glucose and the enzyme the reaction is catalyzed by UDP glucose phosphorylase This is catalyzed by UDP glucose phosphorylase. So now it would be converted into UDP glucose. And UDP glucose would look like somewhat So this is the structure of UDP glucose when our uridine moiety is attached and UDP glucose is very important for addition into a preformed glycogen uh, polymer. So we have a preformed glycogen polymer. We would denote it as N and now it would attach with UDP glucose and ultimately it would form glycogen. And it would increase the chain by uh, one uh, residue long. So this would be the final reaction. So now, uh, if we talk about how this uh, glycogen preformed glycogen polymer uh, appears, so we should talking about a protein named as glycogenin. And this glycogenin protein is actually a 
dimer. So this glycogen in protein has two subunits, subunit A and subunit B. And at the terminal position, it has a tyrosine group. With this tyrosine group, with this tyrosine group, some glucose molecules, some glucose moieties are actually attached. And these glucose moieties are uh, with these glucose moieties, further attachment of other glucose moieties takes place. I mean, UDP glucose directly attached to these moieties and elongate the chain. That is how it occurs. So the chain gets elongated continuously. And this is the basic reaction scheme. So next we would talk a little about the regulation. We would talk about regulation. regulation so uh, one enzyme I want you to remember is in this step this step is catalyzed from glycogen plus UDB glucose and it forming a glycogen n plus one residue this and this step is uh, actually catalyzed by one very important enzyme which is a rate limiting enzyme for this glycogenesis step this is glycogen synthase this is glycogen synthase and this enzyme is very important because it is the rate limiting enzyme so this is the rate limiting enzyme in this pathway so this uh, rate limiting enzyme could get allosteric modification so that we would see how this uh, rate limiting enzyme get uh, allosteric modification so glycogen synthase generally have two forms one is it has glycogen synthase in a form glycogen synthase in a form and glycogen synthase in a form is not phosphorylated and it is active form another form is glycogen synthase in a B form and glycogen synthase in B form is inactive because it is the phosphorylated version of the enzyme and in a phosphorylated state this is inactive so it is phosphorylated as you can see and this is not phosphorylated and this is active state so the switching between these active conformation and inactive conformation would ultimately regulate this pathway so let's see how this pathway take place so so now what happens so from inactive state to active state switching is catalyzed by for a phosphatase enzyme a phosphatase enzyme phosphoprotein phosphatase and this enzyme is regulated by other hormones such as insulin so what happens insulin actually triggers the activity of phosphoprotein phosphatase and thus inactive form of glycogen synthase get active and ultimately the glycogenesis reaction take place glucose get converted into uh, glycogen but glucagon and epinephrine On the other side, allosterically uh, hinders this uh, phosphoprotein phosphatase. Glucose 6 phosphate also negatively regulate phosphoprotein phosphatase. And on the other side, the conversion of active form into inactive form is triggered by uh, GSK, glycogen synthase kinase. So when glycogen synthase kinase is active, what will happen glycogen synthase would become phosphorylated and ultimately glycogen synthase would be inactive so insulin actually inhibits this glycogen synthase kinase so insulin inhibits glycogen synthase kinase so the active form doesn't get converted into inactive form so in presence of insulin the glycogen synthase a form that means the active form takes uh, part in the reaction and it ultimately converts glucose into glycogen 
so that blood glucose level could be lowered and the glucose could be stored inside our liver for future purposes hope you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe